Welcome to another edition of Islanders Insider. Today we come to you from the locker room once again here on the campus of Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. We're going to talk some Islander men's hoops with head coach Willis Wilson and also talk some tennis with director of tennis Steve Moore. We also have a special feature focusing on Islander women's basketball player Brittany Bomala. Right now we're going to talk some men's hoops though with the head coach, Coach Willis Wilson. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Really good. Uh, since the last time we talked, your team has taken to the floor for a couple of Southern Conference matchups and come out winners in both. So congratulations first and foremost. Is the team getting better as the season progresses? You know, that's a great question. I, I think we are. Uh, you know, sometimes when you work on things in practice, there's a about a 10-day lag period before you really see the full effect in games. We re we've worked really hard in practice on rebounding. We continue to work on our defense. We've worked really hard at shooting the ball and, and our offensive execution. And uh, we've, we've seen progress in some of those areas. Uh, we haven't seen it for 40 minutes, but we've seen it in periods of, of the game where it can really make a difference for us. You know, two different kinds of nights for Rashawn Thomas over those two games that we talked about. Everybody's kind of keeping an eye on Rashawn, or on Rashawn, excuse me, and against McNeese, big night. Big double-double, 28 points, 11 rebounds, able to establish a flow. But against Lamar, he only had kind of a small stretch in the second half where he really got into a rhythm, I, I would say. Um, I, I can also kind of say that about Brandon Pye. Similar situation. Hawkeye at McNeese, but struggled at Lamar. Um, the great thing about it is, though, even with someone like Rashawn and Brandon, who are your top two leading scorers, can have a difficult night. But the way this team is developing, there seems to be always guys behind them running to pick them up. That's been the hallmark of this team from day one. We, we talked a lot early on about our depth and, a, and a, about having guys that can step up. And, uh, you know, we, in, in the locker room, we say it's just us. We win together, we lose together. And together means everybody contributes, uh, whether it's the guys on the bench, the red shirts, or uh, the guys that are coming off of the bench to, to lend support to the starters. And as of late, he have a mean has just really caught fire. Uh, Manuel Tony's been incredibly solid, as is Dale Francis. And just having those guys in the fold uh, to be able to pick up. And I tell you what, it's really nice to see Bryce Duvier find his game again. Uh, boy, with Rashawn down on the bench with foul issues, uh, Bryce really stepped up and just was such a warrior for us. Career high 14 boards, finished at 26 points. Uh, he only played 13 minutes at McNeese, which was the interesting thing. Just two days before, five points, three boards. He's incredibly athletic, but he's also quite the cerebral type of player. Uh, how do you help a player, in this case Bryce, get over a tough performance, or in some circumstances, just how do you help him get out of his own way? Well, in Bryce's case, we always talk about it, and we use the analogy of speed. He's a guy that has to go 200 miles an hour, and, and, and Bryce has really come to understand what that means when he hears a coach or a teammate say, Bryce, get your motor going 200. He, he really knows he just got to rev it up. And when he does, with, that, with his skill set and with his big body and athleticism, boy, he's a tough matchup. He really is. You know, none of these games are easy, plain and simple. They never are. And hardly do they ever follow the script. Um, is there you, such thing as a I don't script? Exactly. You, you know, you have to have that ability to adapt. When you're preparing for a game, how much adaptation is, do you have for like a, a series of contingency plans or how much of it is just working off the fly? Well, I, I don't know that you ever work off the fly. Contingency may, may not be the right word either. Fair. We have a number of things in our arsenal that allow us uh, to make adjustments uh, in the flow of the game against Lamar. Uh, the big adjustment on the offensive side was just running our basic offense with a little bit of a wrinkle in our ball screen situations. We're really looking for some baseline penetration. And Lamar was really playing heavy on our roll man, heavy on the middle penetration. And when we made that little adjustment, boy, it just seemed like the floor opened up and we were able to start spreading the ball around with, with much greater ease. You know, I, I want to talk to you, and you mentioned his name a moment ago, Dale Francis. And, and I just, I'm just fascinated with him. And, no, and it's not been an easy ride for Dale over his career. There was a time when I don't think he was having fun. Uh, that has definitely changed. There's no doubt. And not only is he having fun, he's become such a major component, as you just talked about, of the team's success being that first big off the bench for you. Uh, would you agree that, you know, this 
to see Dale where he is right now, this transformation is just pretty stellar, and yeah. his contribution is so important. Dale is really enjoying college basketball right now. Yeah, he's, he's enjoying college basketball. He's enjoying his college experience. Uh, it's it's been a tough ride. Most people don't realize Dale has been away from home since he was 13 years old. Exactly. Um, I think he's found family here. I think he's found consistency here. I think he's he's around a lot of people that love him and care about him, and uh, he's made it, he's made that commitment to embrace the people that are embracing him. And uh, I, I couldn't be more excited and happy for Dale off the basketball court. It's fun watching him shoot those threes. It's fun watching him killing those plays. He's gotten so much better at rebounding the ball and, and doing some other things, scoring around the basket. But the, the, the fun part is just being around Dale every day. He's, he's been become such a positive uh, person and positive influence on our program. It's just really exciting to be around somebody like that. And one of my favorite things is if you're a guard going to the hole and you're near Dale, watch out. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Just, just watch out. He's not gonna, he's not gonna give it to you. I can promise there's, you that. There, there's no yield sign in his vocabulary. <laughs> no, by, by no means. Uh, most look at Rashawn as the focal point of of the team, but in reality, is the identity of this team just the depth? Talking about Dale and others, is that the identity? You know, it, it really has to be. Um, there have been enough nights where Rashawn <coughs> excuse me, has had an off night and somebody has stepped up. Uh, we've seen Hamid Ali have some stellar games. We've seen mm -hmm. Brandon Pye have stellar games. We've seen Jelani Curry and Joe Kilgore step up, and it just seems like there's always room for somebody to come in and find a niche. Lately it's been he have a mean just energy, energy, fireball, just going nonstop. Uh, Emmanuel Tony with his just toughness and grit and, and defense and willing to do all the little things and all the dirty work. Um, I don't think there's any question that, that the, the, the depth of this team and the, and the whole of the team is what makes us uh, successful to this point of the year. You know, you mentioned he had, I mean, uh, with his five steals against Lamar, he's actually moved himself into second in the conference in steals per game behind Hamid Ali, his teammate. When was the last time you saw the number one and number two uh, be on the same team in, in a category such as steals per game? Uh, highly unusual. Highly unusual, and it's just a statement about how much those guys are getting after the ball, guarding the ball at point of attack, and how much support there is behind those guys. No, no doubt. Now, you have a home contest versus Nichols on Saturday uh, coming up, followed by a Tuesday night game on the road at Northwestern State. You know, what is their modus operandi? What are they like? Well, Nichols is playing similar style to what they've always played in the past, but I think they've upgraded their talent a little bit. They're playing with a little more confidence. Um, and, they're, and they're just beginning to show grit. Um, they're, they're not an easy out by any means, and I think they're a team that's capable of catching fire uh, and, and can shoot the ball. Northwestern State, on the other hand, with the loss of uh, Jalen West in the first game of the year, what a setback. I mean, he was preseason player of the year coming into the league. You just don't replace a guy like that. Uh, you can't pick up a guy on the waiver wire like you can in the mm -hmm. NBA. And uh, what a shame for them because he's such a talent and, and really a terrific person as well. Uh, He's one of those guys that I think our kids really enjoy competing against because you know you got to bring your A game. You know he's going to bring his. And again, he just uh, provides them with so much consistency. Zeke Woodley is the other bookend to, to Jalen West. He's having a very nice year, but uh, it's just really challenging for one guy to carry the load uh, when you lose a player as good as Jalen West. There's no doubt. Now, does this team you have right now, uh, do they have any doubt that they can win every game in the league this year? No, I don't, I'm not saying they will. I don't know if that's, keep, that's possible, but do they believe they can? I think our mentality is that we can. There's not a game on our schedule that we cannot win. And I think our guys buy in uh, to the notion that we can get a lot better, that we can improve. Sometimes it's challenging for veteran teams to improve. True. You've done all that maturation and made all that progress as freshmen and sophomores, uh, but I think we're one of those basketball teams because of our depth, um, we still really haven't quite clicked. We're getting closer with our rotation, uh, but we haven't quite clicked offensively and defensively yet in sync, and we haven't really quite clicked with three or four of our better players uh, having really good games on one night. And so I think we've got a lot to look forward to, and you throw the bench play in, and if they can provide that consistent play, this becomes a team that can really go a long way in postseason.
Should be exciting, and everybody's looking forward to it. Once again, Saturday at the American Bank Center versus Nichols and on the road at Northwestern State coming up on Tuesday. Coach, good luck this week. Thank you. Willis Wilson joining us here in the locker room. When we come back to Islanders Insider, we have a special feature focusing on Islander women's basketball player, Brittany Babalu. More to come on Islanders Insider. On behalf of all student athletes, thank you to the members of the Islander Athletic Fund for allowing us to earn a great education at the Island University. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to play the sports that we love. Thank you for preparing us to achieve excellence in the classroom, in competition, and in our community. Thank you for providing us with a first-class campus experience. Thank you for the chance to represent Corpus Christi with pride. Thank you for making us Islanders for life. Thank you for making us Islanders for life. Thank you for making us Islanders for life. Your Texas A&M Corpus Christi men's basketball team is back in action this Saturday in the American Bank Center for a Southland Conference clash with Nickel State at 7 o'clock. All area students are encouraged to bring their A game. Show your report card with an A on it and get rewarded for your hard work by getting into the game free of charge. So get out to the American Bank Center Saturday night and cheer on your Division I hometown team. For information or to reserve your seat, call 361-825-BALL or visit the American Bank Center box office. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. On this week's Chris's Bond Health Systems Features segment, we focus in on Islander women's basketball player, Brittany Bonaloo. Uh, I think I've been having a pretty good season so far. Uh, I wish uh, we could win a lot more games, but uh, I think I've been very confident in my shot and being able to read the defense and not pick and choose where, um, where good shots are really is impacting my game. I think she's an electric offensive player. Uh, she has the green light when she crosses midcourt. She knows the difference in a good shot, bad shot. She has deep range. I think the year off last year really helped her focus and get in the weight room and work on her body and, and she shot a million shots and now she just feels like every time she shoots it, it's going in and she can shoot it from just about any place on the floor. A lot of shooters have a favorite spot and her favorite spot is anywhere where there's wood. So she's a, a, a very a, a very good part of our, our team, a good piece of the puzzle. My first mentality is that I'm going to make it and I don't ever go down the court thinking that I'm not going to make it. You know, just picking and choosing where good shots are and just having confidence in myself. Well, I practice it all the time, so it's not it's not nothing new to me, but for some people that are sitting in the stands, like, are probably like, oh, that's a bad shot. But um, as far as, like, me shooting it that far, I just know I'm capable of my abilities to make it in that far, so it's not anything new to me. I think it makes people play you four on four, and it's a, a, a much easier game when you strip it down to three on three, four on four, two on two. It's a, a situation where you have a better look at uh, the basket because there's not so many people in the paint. You have more opportunities, and you know Brittany is just a type of player that she is so unselfish that she's thrilled when her team gets those opportunities because she's standing on the floor. Obviously, shoot the ball. You know that is what she's the most accomplished at. But she passes well. She can pass it left or right, 20, 30 feet up to advance the ball up the court sometimes. And she's a self-made player. 
you just knew that that kid was in the gym, she was working hard every day, and those are the type of people that you really want on your basketball team. and she gets it to fall deep to the Bombers' first make of the game. Bomblu, Bomblu, this time a three from the left corner and she ah, hits it about a half step back. How I've grown was that um, really just being confident and practicing on my own. Um, really just uh, watching basketball, watching college basketball has really helped me to become the player I am today. Um, uh, high school is a lot easier than college for sure, and the defense in college is a lot harder. So, uh, really just uh, reading the defense is really helping. I think she's very quiet. I think she is kind of a silent assassin. She's the, kind of the young lady that's on the bus, very rarely you know, leading cheers or saying anything. But when you put the basketball in her hands, in a basketball game on the offensive end, she's lethal, and, and I think our team really rallies around the opportunity to get Brittany some threes. I think, first of all, Brittany is a fighter. You know, she is a perfectionist and a fighter, so she wanted to make sure she her knee was absolutely perfect in order to come back, and everybody knows once you have an injury, perfection is hard to um, attain. But she got in the gym, she got shots up, you know, even when our trainer, Chelsea, and the physician was like, you know, you need to rest that knee a little bit, make sure that you're getting the strength that you need. She wanted to know, well, what type of shots can I shoot? Can I sit in a chair and shoot, you know, anything like that. So the kid, you know, just being away from the gym, I think it really hurt her soul in some types of ways. And she, once she was able to get in the gym and really start getting her shots up again, you see now after three or four games, she really kind of caught her rhythm. When, when I first, when I started my first game, I think it was against, Western Illinois two years ago. Like, once I started my first game, like, I just took off. Um, and that gave me the confidence to really, like, that gave me the mentality and the confidence to know, like, hey, I could play at, I could play at this level. I'm good enough, you know. And that just set the ball rolling for me. Lung cancer is the leading cancer killer in both men and women. Because most cases are diagnosed in the most advanced stage, early detection is the key to survival. Are you between the age of 55 and 74? Have a smoking history of at least 30 pack years? Radiology and Imaging of South Texas and Krista Spahn Cancer Center have joined together to offer affordable lung cancer screenings. Call 1-855-557-7646 to schedule. Because what you can't see can kill you. I'm Christy Felice and I am the Director of Brand Engagement for the Houston Astros. Texas A&M University at Corpus Christi has absolutely helped get me to where I am today and it is a small campus with large opportunities. You should definitely choose Texas A&M University at Corpus Christi. 97% of A&M Corpus Christi graduates will be working or in graduate school upon graduation. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Discover your island. Visit us today at tour.tamucc.edu.
Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we're going to talk some Islanders tennis with the director of tennis, head coach Steve Moore. Coach, how are you doing? Good to see you, Steve. How Great you? seeing you. Um, for the second time in three years, uh, your men opened the spring season with an NCAA preseason ranking, this time number 60, ahead of teams like Auburn, Clemson, Alabama. Who are the people that come up with the rankings, and how did your team earn this type of respect? Well, so the Intercollegiate Tennis Association does a ranking. It's based on a point value, uh, your best nine wins. Um, the first one of the year is just a poll. So of the 300 plus teams, um, they rank publicly 75. And um, we take a lot of pride getting in those national rankings for several reasons. Number one, it validates their hard work. The, you know, for the girls to see it, the guys to see it, and the girls have seen it too um, on several occasions. It, it validates the hard work and sacrifice they're doing. But the second thing it does, look, I'm from Corpus, you're from Corpus. We didn't have D1 growing up. To see our name up there with Alabama and Clemson, you know, um, it shows that, uh, that we're working hard and it brings a lot of pride to our city. It, it matters a lot to people who love Corpus and want to stay in Corpus and believe in this university in Corpus to see our name out there. No doubt. You know, your women seem to be as deep a team as you've had in a very long time. Uh, tell me about their newest additions that has rounded out the roster. Yeah, Hortense Bosher and Marina and Alex Bell. I mean, these girls have been fantastic additions. Um, we're not just looking for a talent level. We're also looking for someone that will fit into our culture. Hard work, go to class athletic discipline lifestyle be a great teammate and these girls are I don't want to say perfect but they're about <laughs> as good as we're gonna find they're really great complimenting the Spaniards in particular on your team yes and who are so much like that all about team all about hard work and they're here for the right reasons um, gosh they're a joy to coach I, I told the girls uh, yesterday I said you guys spoil us with being great teammates and max effort I just have not I, I haven't dealt with an attitude or a lack of effort issue in years. I mean, I, I, and I mean like four or five years. They're just great kids. I mentioned the Spaniards a moment ago and Kevin Bettendorfer earlier, and he's from France, and, and, and there's, there's so many different people from so many different areas, so many different countries. Have, have you had the opportunity to pick up some lingual skill, uh, some skills along the way? I mean, <laughs> what foreign language have you mastered? You know, I'm not bad at Spanish, um, but then I have these little words that I kind of create, like in the big moment. Oh, you create words? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Judith, Your own language. Okay. My own. I kind of mix it in in the moment. <laughs> it's very intense, and you got to get one thing to them in a 10-second span. We were playing Stephen F. Austin a few years ago, and I wanted Judith, who's a lefty, to play that heavy ball like Nadal. And she was playing too much in the strike zone, and I wanted her to just get it up one meter. And... Um, and in the big moment with all the fans screaming, everyone screaming, I said, Judith, Nadalita, Nadalita, like a, a girl version of Nadal's forehand. <laughs> and, and, she, and I got a smile out of her in the most, the most intense moment. <laughs> um, the, so, yeah, I, um, I, I like learning and I like, I, I'm a self-improvement person. I always want to learn new things, add new things, but they teach me a lot. Um, they teach me a lot about different cultures, but they also try mm -hmm. to teach me little things about their language. But I tell you what, when I go recruiting, they all give me an index card, <laughs> and if I lose that index card, I'm in deep trouble. <laughs> I'll end up on the wrong train. That's a bad idea. Uh, you don't just focus on X's and O's when it comes to tennis. Uh, you dedicate a lot of attention to other intangibles, and one in particular is community. You know, how does community help your team grow and get better as student athletes? It's, it's, it's huge. I mean, people say culture is everything. I would add community is everything. It so galvanizes and energizes you because you know that you matter and you know the community is very passionate about what you're doing. The support we get, the monetary support is huge and our gratitude for that is, I could take up the whole show on it. But, but also just the phone calls, the people who come to you in Starbucks and, and, and say, man, I'm proud of your team, what it does for this city. And they tell that a lot to these kids and I tell you what, if you're, if you're fighting hard at three all in the third and it's been four hours and you see a guy who you really care about or a professor who you really care about, I mean, the, this, this community cheering for you, it pulls you through. It, it matters a lot. Um, 
I always say there's no school I'd rather coach at than here. That's a lot because of this community. Uh, coach, again, best of luck this season. Thanks, Dean. Good Corpus guy. Appreciate you. No doubt. No doubt. Islander men's tennis, Islander women's tennis. Check out scheduling information at GoIslanders.com. When we come back, we'll bring you up to speed on what's next for Islanders Athletics. More to come. Go Islanders. On, on Islanders Insider. Once again, welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we want to bring you up to speed on what's next for Islanders Athletics. Islander women's basketball will take to the court on Saturday the 16th at 4.30 as they host the Nichols Colonels. That'll be game one of an Islander doubleheader because Islander men's basketball will take the court following at 7 o'clock. On Tuesday the 19th, Islander men's basketball will get on the road to Natchitoches, Louisiana as they take on Northwestern State, game time, 6.30 p.m. Islanders men's tennis gets underway on Monday the 18th as they host Prairie View A&M at the Thomas J. Henry Tennis Center. Start time, 12 p.m. It is a double header for the men's team as Prairie View will play once again the Islanders at 4.30. And then on Monday the 18th as well, Prairie View women's team will come to town as they'll take on the Islander women. That's start time, 4.30. Once again, we want to thank Willis Wilson, head coach of Islander Men's Basketball, as well as Director of Tennis Steve Moore for joining us here in the locker room today. Most importantly, we thank you for tuning in. For everyone here at Islander Athletics, I'm Stephen King. You've been watching Islanders Insider.